Let's have a lesson and discussion on this work. Follow the lesson for free and just pick up all the tips from the video. But if you're interested, I do a sheet music edition of all 25 etudes in Carcassi's Opus 60, and there's a link for that in the description. So etude number 14 has a lot of upper, upper voice um, melodic scale passages to work on, but you also have to include the thumb um, quite often on the first um, beat of each measure and sometimes more often than that on the quarter note. On a few occasions, the lower voice takes over the, the melodic scale runs, uh, which we will also discuss. When you're practicing this, I think the first thing you want to do is just play that upper voice on its own a little bit and work out the musicality that you want. <laughs> Once you've kind of worked on that, you have it legato, you have a little bit of speed worked up, and you have the phrasing and musicality you want, you can add the thumb into the mix, um, but you don't want to disrupt that good musicality that you worked on. So that's going to be the goal, is, is really playing that upper line or the, the running melodic line with as much musicality as possible, and then when you add all the notes in, which are mainly open, open bass strings, you don't want to disrupt that. You will find, however, that compared to just playing scale passages, um, the inclusion of the thumb does change the feel of it, and you might have to bring that tempo down a little bit compared to what you can play your, your scales at. So you go over that upper line, then you add in the thumb. And you, and you keep that, that musicality. When you play this piece at a, at a slow tempo, you can add a, quite a bit of musicality to it and quite a bit of shaping and even a little bit of subtle um, rubato. Not too much, but you know enough to, to bring out the phrasing and musicality uh, to your liking. As you pick up tempo though, um, you'll have to reduce that a little bit and the piece becomes you know quite a bit more challenging and relentless because it is 16th notes kind of from start all the way to finish. So for the most part, um, practice it very slowly and musically and then um, and get to know the piece very very well because when you raise the tempo because of the constant 16th notes in this piece the opportunity for small errors um, definitely presents itself in terms of musicality uh, i will go over more when we do a walkthrough of the piece the only other thing i, I want to discuss is just a little bit of the the right hand fingering i'm using alternating i am through the majority of the piece whenever that upper running line is happening i'm just using i am pretty much the whole time or am i depending on on where we are in the piece it doesn't really matter though there's going to be awkward string crossings regardless of what fingering you choose so but alternation is is key here when we switch to the bass voice taking over the melodic runs that like measure 10 for example um, i do a combination of thumb and fingers I use the thumb to transition from the upper note to the bass note and then finish the run with I am. Then thumb to transition back to the upper notes. So thumb, then I am, thumb to transition. And that's just an ergonomic thing where you end on a certain note for measure nine. We end with I, so we use thumb to transition, but then we use I am to complete the scale run. And then we play the final note with the thumb so we can transition our fingers 
seamlessly to the upper voice. At slower tempos, you could use your thumb for the entire lower line. Making it a really great thumb study in those sections. However, once you start really raising the tempo up, it becomes less practical. Um, and I think really gliding through those lines at a really fast tempo um, is just more practical with the fingers. So I've notated using the thumb and fingers integration as I just showed you. However, if you're playing this at a slower tempo, you can play with lots of musicality and you could use your thumb in that section. Sounds great and it works really, really well. It's just at faster tempos. So I'll leave that up to you um, depending on what tempo you're doing. If you think you can play those lower lines with just the thumb and play them really legato, go for it. If as you raise that metronome marking and you're working up some speed to an allegro moderato here, um, and you might need to switch over to the to the fingers. So besides that, I think we should just do a walkthrough and we can talk about some of the curiosities of the piece, but there's not too much to discuss because there's nothing particularly awkward in this piece. There's no bar chords, there's no difficult stretches. It's There's a couple of shifts that we have to deal with, but for the most part, it's just melodic work with some, with some thumb thrown in there. I'll go quite a bit slower. Make sure you hold the fourth finger down for the full value there. Uh, keep the thumb down, or the B down, sorry. So we're using the open string to shift there. Relax at uh, the ends of some of those phrases. Relax. Begin again. So I do follow his rests. I'm not too strict with cutting those bass notes or upper notes off at the eighth note. Um, I, I just, I might even uh, mute them at the quarter note, but just you're not going to let them sustain to really bring out that exchange between the two voices. From measure 13. Open string shift again. Do a little bit of a writ here because it's starting again. See, I'm, I'm doing the same trick for all of those exchanges where I start the lower voice with the thumb, then do the actual passage with my fingers, and then thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers. I would do a little bit of a writ here just to um, just to break it up. It starts to become a little bit uh, like machine gun fire through here, so for musicality reasons and, and phrasing. Then go through it. So that that section for measure 30, I decided to finger it like this. There's so many options for the fingering here, but I decided to go one, two, four, one. And make sure you do a proper shift to fifth position when you get to that A. That way you're in position for that content. And I do a little bar there. That requires a small shift. So let's do it for measure 30 one more time. So keep Keep in mind how strict I am about shifting my hand for each position. I'm in second position, fourth position, fifth position. I can't talk and do it at the same time. Second position, fourth position, fifth, 
seventh. That little section at measure 30, uh, at tempo, at faster speeds, it is, um, well, you just have to really keep your positions really clear. Otherwise, you, it could get like very noodly with the fingers and it can really uh, offer the opportunity for small mistakes. But just keep those positions really clear and that way you can just execute the fingering within each position really cleanly. Lots of opportunities here um, for different tempos. If you go slower, you can do a lot of shaping. At faster tempos, it becomes a little bit more relentless and um, and active and exciting. It's allegro moderato, so you don't you you'll find that because of the inclusion of some of the sections and and the thumb that going you know super fast is, is quite difficult but it's a really good challenge in that regard to maintain some of your musicality while also raising that tempo and working on your melodic lines within the context of a multi-voice piece. So really great etude. I had to spend some extra time working on it this time to, to even reach that tempo. I would love to go even faster, but that's what I've arrived at. You could really work on this um, continuously for a very long time, though, because the, the more you know it, the better it's going to go with all these, with all this um, very particular fingering throughout the piece. So take your time with it, go really slow, play it really musically, and then you can start raising the tempo.